And we're back. Max, you have something special for us today on Combat Corner, so I will let you get right into it. Yeah, I, this is the last week of No Fights booked for a little while, so it'll be right back to the normal bread and butter previews recaps for the most part starting Friday. So instead of just talking about some matches that got made this week, I thought I'd take the opportunity to commemorate the career of Habib Nurmagomedov with his retirement finally being official official even though there's pretty well zero chance of him fighting since he said but I want to start and end with just what a special career it was I mean there is never going to be a definitive goat in any sports let alone something like mixed martial arts but what you are going to have is a group of athletes who all showed you something different but something special and that for sure, Khabib Nurmagomedov. I, I want to wind the clock back to uh, around UFC 216, the first full card I ever watched, uh, headlined by Tony Ferguson, Kevin Lee. I was still coming off the Conor McGregor hype, watching him box Mayweather, and I watched this main event, got super excited to see um, Conor fight Tony, which I thought would be this awesome fight. And... UFC 217 follows and UFC 218, which all have some fantastic fights. And I'm kind of sealed for life probably as a UFC fan, starting to get the rhythm of watching every card. And then UFC 219, for the first time I get to watch Khabib Nurmagomedov live going up against Edson Barboza and just see something otherworldly in this terrifying dominant performance that... I guess a part of his legacy that I saw the tail end of was just the three round smash and getting to see it once against Barboza alive was fantastic uh, going up against a top five striker on this knockout streak who has reportedly fantastic takedown defense. And like I said, showing something special, so showing something different, showing something terrifying, relentless, fearless stand-up pressure where all he needs to do is tie you up. And then once he's got you tied up, all he needs is one takedown. And then once he gets one takedown, the fight is basically over because he is going to smash you so hard that you are just going to be too compromised to really fight and have any chance to win for the rest of the fight and I got to see that for the first time live against Barboza and I think he had it on the judges scorecards like 30-25 30-25 30-24 or something which even to this day is a scorecard I haven't really heard repeated and it was just an instant fan for life type making performance and put him right on the radar me a guy who was really waiting to see Connor come back in and defend his lightweight title and you start learning about what he did to Michael Johnson what he did to Rafael Dos Anjos right before Dos Anjos went and won the lightweight title and start to understand what a problem this guy was for the division and then the legacy of this Tony Ferguson fight which gets made there's all this hype and then in a sequence of events I still can't believe three and a half four years later they make the fight it's 10 days away and then on April Fools they announced that Tony Ferguson slipped on a microphone cord and like tore his legs so bad that he needed surgery that left him with a 12 inch scar I still can't quite believe that happens um carousel of opponents the most cursed card in UFC history but Habib still makes the walk to the octagon against Ally Quinta on like a day and a half two days notice and I was thinking about short notice five round matchups recently um, with this Usman Masvidal rematch kind of coming up sh soon and wondering like how harshly to judge Usman for how safe he played it in the first matchup and I think Khabib set a gold standard for that in the Iaquinta matchup. I mean Iaquinta not the threat that Masvidal is although Iaquinta does have a win over him interestingly but Habib showed brilliance again taking it 50-43 showing what a dominant wrestler he is but also showing the stand up off and showing his ability to read fights I, I mean you have no training camp time so you haven't really drilled for this specific guy you've got to get in there make your reads on him and do what you think is best and he mixed it up so beautifully I, I loved that third and fourth round 
because Iaquinta did his own like on the fly adjustments and said, I don't want to get taken down and I'm going to compromise my stand up ability, crouch a little lower, put myself in this position where I can't really initiate offense and I'm going to be half a second slower trying to counter. But my takedown defense is going to be real solid. How are you going to respond? And Habib responded by jabbing his face off. It, it, like, not the prettiest, most technical jab, but he landed it so effectively, so repeatedly, stayed out of danger from those counters, and showed such high mixed martial arts IQ. Won the fight 50-43 to get a belt wrapped around his waist. And then there's some unhappiness because he's not the lineal champ. He just got the belt awarded to him for beating like the guy who was at the lower end of the top 15 and what happens next? He takes the belt from the lineal champ in Conor McGregor in the biggest fight in mixed martial arts history. And I, this night was so special for a lot of reasons to me. But it was such an event. It was family Thanksgiving for us here in Canada. So I was with a lot of family and made them all watch it. Uh, made my sister a mixed martial arts fan on that night. So that was nice. But got to see Khabib perform and stay calm in the biggest fight of mixed martial arts history and you've seen conor mcgregor let the occasion rise and build up and get to so many guys and could be just cool as a cucumber in there until the fight ends admittedly but again just showed that specialness showed what a force he is showed that all he needs is one takedown and he is so good at getting that one takedown and never really let McGregor into it. The only round he lost over the six fights I watched live in his career happened in that fight. And even then it was like a 50, 50 striking matchup where I think if McGregor doesn't cheat and grab the gloves in the last 60 seconds of that round, Habib gets the takedown against the wall and cinches the round. So even that asterisks, but another phenomenal performance by him in that one that just I think that's when his star really shot up globally I mean at this point I'd been telling some of my friends about this guy for years or at least one year I guess that's not a full calendar year but, but that's when people started to message me and were like yeah you're right this guy man and from there he just kind of put the gold seal on the resume in his matchups against uh, Poirier and Gaethje, both getting well-deserved title shots in the deepest division of the UFC. They were taking out killers. And Habib just continued to make it look easy against the absolute pound-for-pound -pound best talent, most dangerous title contenders in the world in Poirier and Gaethje with these absolute grappling masterclasses and why I alluded to earlier in the Barboza fight is he got a little away from that like terrifying ground and pound. I think part of that was a five round adjustment to make sure he had the cardio to go all five rounds if needed, though he never did need them after that Iaquinta fight. Um, but I mean, he's so efficient on his trips, so effective with his stand up pressure so perfect at gassing opponents and making them wear down and making them frustrated, making them mentally break. You saw Poirier and Gaethje in the corners in between rounds, just like, fuck, fuck, I can't do anything. I had a full training camp preparing exactly for this. I've drilled these moves hundreds of times and it's no good. There's nothing we can do. And getting finishes, submissions, like, just as a matter of due process um in between those two fights he of course was booked to fight tony ferguson one more time and i'm still not completely unconvinced that this global pandemic that we're in was in fact actually our uh, simulation overlords just needing to throw another wild card in there to stop the fight from happening because that's really what it felt like in March when the pandemic was bearing down and we were just watching a race for time with this fight. Maybe it's almost a mercy that Gaethje beat Ferguson and the fight was stopped at five count because if they had booked it for a sixth time, I think there would have been an alien invasion to prevent the fight from happening because 
April Fool's tripping on a cord. Before that, it could be going into liver failure and then a goddamn global pandemic. I, I, what can top that other than something ridiculous like an alien division or nuclear war? So maybe for the planet's well-being, that, that fight what hasn't been booked for a sixth time. And it's such a testament to Khabib's dominance that this for a solid period of time the most exciting fight in mixed martial arts history um isn't for me at least going to be one of the biggest what ifs because he was just that dominant and that special that in hindsight it's really no stretch of the imagination to think about how that fight against tony would have gone even though both guys on double digit winning streaks in this terrifyingly deep division there doesn't really seem to be a lot of doubt even if tony was at his best how that fight would have gone because again Khabib just such a special fighter he doesn't have the length of resume to compare to guys like GSP Aldo Demetrius Johnson Asterix John Jones but he has something else he has pure dominance in a division full of killers Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier and uh, Justin Gaethje like three guys who you've got to think are between the three of them going to at least present one knockout threat at some point in fights and no he did the same thing to all of them in just having perfect striking defense um getting the takedown wearing them down and winning flawlessly i can't imagine we'll ever see anything special as that again that level of dominance over that high level threat of opponents and it's really been such a pleasure to watch over these past few years and just looking back and reminiscing over it is so fun because what a special fighter i mean just congratulations to habib Nurmagomedov, and i don't think his legacy on mixed martial arts is over as a fighter certainly but as a coach we might see him herald a fleet of dagestani champions into the ufc He's talked about wanting to make mixed martial arts an Olympic sport, which I don't know how you get that many fights off over two weeks enough to do so, but that could be huge. So looking forward to the next chapter in his mixed martial arts legacy.